in order to um, get into the video is let's start off by removing the different layers of the heart so you have the fibrous pericardium the fibrous pericardium is the main function is to usually anchor the heart and the base of the great vessels you know the great vessels include vessels such as the superior vena cava the arch of the aorta and the pulmonary and um, pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries and stuff these are known as the great vessels now the heart is a, a muscular pump which you know generates pressure and velocities and these could cause movement so if there was nothing to anchor this in position you know they could eventually get out of place and completely rupture into different directions so the main function if anyone asks you what a fibrous pericardium yes it is a sac which covers the heart and protects it from Every, all the other mediastinal structures but also it has a main function which is basically anchoring the base of the great vessels it usually consists of two outer layers of fibrous and an inner two inner uh, an outer fibrous layer and an inner uh, serous layer which is further divided into two known as the inner serous and the visceral layer now the um so let's remove the first layer the so we have next we have what's known as a parietal layer of the serous pericardium and then we also have the visceral layer now let's just go back to the first one so we had the different conditions and things that people could usually um, suffer from these type of problems is usually pericarditis this is information of the pericardium usually of the fibrous pericardium due to bacterial uh, infections and various things then we had what's known as the um, second layer which is a parietal layer of the serous pericardium usually supplied and innervated by the vagus nerve and then finally we have you can I'm not sure whether you can see it but when you rotate the heart you can see a transparent type of sac this is the sac which is the most inner and completely covering the uh, heart on a 3d anatomy model and a software like this is usually very well seen but in a real life gross specimen it is very hard to see so once we remove that as well this is also supplied by the parasympathetic fibers from the vagus nerve then you see a yellow tinge of fat muscle and fast tissue this is the this is what's known as the epicardial adipose tissue in people with healthy hearts they usually have a very low or moderate amount of tinge of yellow like the one so you, that like what you see on the screen but in people with obese and overweight conditions they might suffer from a bit more now once we remove that we have a very clean a very you know reflective surface looking heart this is because it's completely covered in muscle now the coronary arteries that we're um, before I get into the anatomy of the coronary arteries what I want you to remember is the view that the we're looking at directly right now is the right the left side of the patient is where the mouse is where I'm pointing to and the right side would be somewhere here which means the sternum directly being in the middle and then you have the heart retro behind it so most of you before I get into anything would know major coronary arteries like right coronary artery and you all have heard of the LAD every student that I usually speak to seems to know about the left anterior descending artery and that is it the view is limited to that amount so throughout this video hopefully you understand and recognize all the different circulation so the one we're seeing on the screen right now directly when you look at a patient head on through their chest what you can usually see is the right coronary artery which is highlighted now as purple so you can see it's highlighted as right coronary artery and the right coronary artery runs in the coronary sulcus the sulcus is this groove so you can see from the 3d aspect that the right coronary artery is you know it's almost tucked in tucked right away into the corner you know it's nicely placed it's not all over the place and this groove here is known as the right coronary sulcus or the coronary artery sulcus this is what you see from a straight away view but then everyone has a question what about LAD I can't see the LAD the LAD is actually supplying the left ventricle and the apex of the heart what are you seeing what are you seeing in front of the screen is what's more important so the view that we're looking at here this whole triangular thing here is a right ventricle and you can only see a very small segment i.e. the bottom half or the apex which is the known as the wall of the left ventricle now what is the structure here many students usually confuse this for being the right ventricle so then what does this mean they would usually turn around and say this whole thing is a right ventricle yes it is the whole right ventricle 
but this is what's known as the oracle or the right oracle usually oracle in medical terms is defined as the ear of the heart and it's basically simply a triangular broad muscular pouch that is visible on the exterior side of the heart overlapping the ascending aorta not very significantly important at this moment now if we swing the model back around then we see a few more branches and if we go from a very inferior point of view you can see the apex of the heart so the triangular aspect and you see various different um, coronary arteries all converging eventually into the apex or the middle part i.e. the triangular end of the triangular bit so we can safely split this into the right side of the patient remember this is the right side where the mouse is pointed to and this is the left side so this can then be split into the right side and the left side now we'll go from there so if this is the right side of the patient i.e. from this view then this must be the right coronary artery so where must the left coronary artery be this here what do you see is the left coronary artery now in order to view this clearly and much more better we would need to remove the arch of the aorta or the ascending aorta to be more precise once we remove the segment of the ascending aorta we see we can zoom in at the part of the so you can see from here the ascending aorta or the very aortic bulb gives off two branches and these two branches can you, you can clearly see one goes down that direction and one from this direction and what's highlighted here coming off this direction is the right coronary artery now we're going to be focusing on right coronary artery for now so let's just zoom back out bring the model back in to make it more clear to understand so you can see the main thing i want you to take away is both left and right coronary arteries start and originate from the aortic bulbs i.e. just above just um, before the arch of the aorta the right coronary artery gives off supplies to the first we have the conus or known as the conus branch of the right coronary artery usually um, branches um, are very difficult these give off different branches in this direction but this is not shown in the model and very not you know you don't, you're not required to understand this the um, supply structures is the conus arteriosus which is the cone part or the top part of the right ventricle then you have the two different branches which is known as the ventricular branches of the right coronary artery so the ventricular now so we have the right coronary artery coming directly off the aortic bulb giving off three branches then we go down and then we have what's known as the right marginal branch of the right coronary artery again more you know this is the top part of the ventricle middle part and now we can go to the inferior so the right coronary artery comes all the way down and then finally gives off two different branches now so we had the conus the uh, ventricular branches we had the marginal branch right marginal branch of the right coronary artery now we have what's known as the inferior intraventricular branch of the right coronary artery so we're getting more closer to the apex of the heart so it's supplying more of the bottom half of the right ventricle and then finally we have the uh, right postural lateral postural means behind lateral means away postural lateral branch of the right coronary artery so from the right coronary artery we all together have one two three four five branches that you need to be aware of so right coronary artery first branch is known as the conus branch of the coronary artery then we have the ventricular branches which supplies more or less the very top part of the um, right ventricle this is the top part of the right ventricle and this is the apex or going towards and the this is the middle part and finally this is the inferior part so this then we have the right marginal branch of the right coronary artery and then we have the inferior intraventricular branch of the right coronary artery and finally we finish off with the right posterolateral branch of the right coronary artery now some students would ask okay fine nothing you've described everything of um, we've gone through all the supplies of the right ventricle where is the supply for the right atrium coming from all right in order to understand the supply of the right atrium from the right coronary artery there is a usually 
a branch which goes unnoticed. Most students do not know about this. And this is known as the right here, which is highlighted. It is the sinoatrial nodal branch of the right coronary artery. So if you have a question in the MCQ or as generally someone asks you what is the first branch of the right coronary artery, then the correct answer is the sinoatrial nodal branch of the right coronary artery and not the conus. The sinonodal uh, uh, branch of the right coronary artery usually originates from the right coronary artery between the aorta and the right atrical auricle, which is here, and it then winds around the superior vena cava. So that's the main key import, important thing. It usually winds, you can see, goes around, winds around the superior vena cava, supplying the auricle and the right atrium, uh, right ventricle, right atrium, yes, and some parts of the left auricle. So once again, right coronary artery, conus, then you have the uh, ventricular branches, then you have the right marginal, and then you have the inferior intraventricular, inferior because it's inferior, and then finally we finish off with the uh, right posterior lateral branch of the right coronary artery. Now everything else that you see on the bottom is related to the left side. So from this view, I imagine you're looking at the heart from directly from bottom upwards from an inferior point of view. Then we've pretty much said everything or covered everything up to this point here, which is the inferior intraventricular branch of right coronary artery. This is why a 3D illustration of the coronary artery is so important because you can visualize all the different angles. And when you do an angiograph on a patient usually suffering from some sort of uh, acute angina or unstable angina, this view is very important. Now, let's let's simply go back to the let's simply go back to the different aspects and different parts of the bring the heart back. So we have the pericardium remove it layer by layer and we remove the epicardial tissue so what do you see again right coronary artery now where is the left coronary artery so the left coronary artery is hiding somewhere behind here from the inferior point of view if I was to ask you what this artery here is this is the this artery here would be known as the inferior this is the postural or right marginal branch and the right coronary artery terminates like this at the very apex. Now the left coronary artery again starts, remember it starts off at the aortic bulb from that side of the angle. So in order to view it we need to rotate the heart more or less in there. So once we remove the posterior wall of the left atrium and the oracle as well, left oracle, we can clearly now see loads of branches or coronary arteries coming down and you can see it runs, now where does, remember the right coronary artery runs in the right, um, in the coronary sulcus, the left coronary artery also runs in a certain sulcus because it's nicely tucked away, right? So in order to view it, we would need to completely get away of the conus arteriosus which is part of the pulmonary trunk once you remove that, you can see the left coronary artery usually starts off with the L2 valves. So left, so now this is a clear view of the left coronary artery. So you can see the left coronary artery, which is highlighted on the screen on the top here. Now, the left coronary artery, unlike the right coronary artery, is much more complicated, and many people seem to know just one branch of the left coronary artery, which is the LAD, i.e. known as the anterior intraventricular branch of the left coronary artery. Usually in different parts of the world, they usually refer this to as the LAD. The LAD has three segments. Here we have the most proximal, mid, and distal. Distal meaning the most distal and away. The reason why people usually refer to the LAD as three different parts, and usually the right coronary artery also has a proximal, mid and distal but you might not hear it so often it's because the LAD is more prone to arthrosclerotic plaques and most angiographic plaques and in cat labs and stuff is usually done on this artery. Now if we go back so we have the left coronary artery 
the first branch of the left coronary artery the coronary, left coronary artery usually splits into two branches remember the right coronary artery remains the right coronary artery and it just gives off branches but the left coronary artery in this case it splits off into two different branches and it's in the left coronary artery physically stops here there is no more left coronary artery it's named something completely different now the left coronary artery gives off the first supply which is known as the entry uh, LAD the LAD goes down and descends within the coronary sulcus remember the I forgot to say the um, this is also in the coronary sulcus it it goes down the LAD goes down into coronary sulcus supplying the right and left both the right and left certain aspects of the right ventricle remember this is the right ventricle certain aspects of the right ventricle and the left atria as well as the left ventricle mainly and also the anterior two-thirds of the intraventricular septum this is very key important the LAD also supplies the intra anterior two-thirds of the intraventricular septum so then you have the second branch which is known as the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery so remember the left coronary artery splits into the LAD and circumflex the left circumflex branch of the left coronary artery whenever you refer to a circumflex branch of the left circumflex branch think that the patient I think that the doctor is usually always referring to the left coronary artery just pause the video and think in this video so far did I mention anything about a circumflex artery on the right coronary artery no I didn't so whenever you hear the word circumflex branch always think they're referring to the left coronary artery a branch of the left coronary artery now the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery gives off two supplies um, this usually supplies the as you can see at the position it uh, doesn't supply anything it gives off two branches the first branch is the left marginal branch of the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery I usually remember it as left marginal branch that's all I remember it as and then you have the further down you have the posterior left ventricular branch so left marginal branch and posterior ventricular so posterior meaning the very bottom or the bottom half of the heart so that pretty much sums up all the different supplies so now remember if I was to say what is this you would this is part of the right coronary artery what is this, this is the terminal and the ending right postural branch and so the left coronary artery first starts off here gives off two supplies LAD which has different parts proximal mid and distal and then you have what's known as the circumflex branch of the left coronary artery it gives of two branches the left marginal as well as the finally the posterior left branch so don't be confused now if we were to isolate this completely in a view where um, you can simply no sorry not this if you can uh, coronary arteries and then we go into an isolation mode This is what simply the coronary artery looks like. Now, remember from the view is what you need to understand is this is the right coronary artery. This member, this first branch, this is the first branch, and then you have the conus. Don't ever say the conus is the first branch. And then you can see the left ventricular artery, left coronary artery given LAD. The LAD somehow fuses with the um, this aspect here of the artery so this is simply what an angiogram would look like and I'll go through that in the next video so thank you for watching this 3D anatomy hopefully you've understood all the different branches